Hello everybody, it's 23rd of June, Sunday. I want to record this, feel like it's important. I don't know if I'm seeing something here or getting a, a message or insight, thoughts, but it just, it won't, it won't get out of my mind. Now, I'm going to play a little clip here from Into Thin Air. I'll put a link down below what he caught a couple months ago. Conditions are repeating themselves, not just the weather radar, but the situation. Now, if you look down here, you see the weather pattern, how it goes all the way to Antarctica. I'll point out that in a little bit. Situation down by Antarctica, it's happening Why it's more important. than once. So once again, as I put these side by side, the anomaly from February and then the okay. anomaly again we just covered from. He covered this, excellent. Now, here's what I found something it might be something it might not be something check it out florida's weather then i started strolling down here to the south let's make it bigger then i noticed these lines so wait a minute maybe lines here too perfect perfect line all across antarctica like a wall as you see no straight line like like a barrier and i noticed that like th that caught my attention i said let me let me record this before it disappears it just goes all across uh, antarctica this is today, Sunday. Now, this is where I want to take this. A couple years ago, back in, this was back in 2016, December 7th, when Buzz Aldrin, astronaut from Apollo 11, tweeted this. We are in great danger. It is evil. So whatever, he was down in Antarctica with the expedition of other VIPs. Something scared the bejesus out of him because he had a heart attack. They had to medevac him out. So I said, wow, what a coincidence. And then I saw, I was checking out Twitter and then I came across this today. I said, what the odds of this? So let me play it. All things stated here are just purely truth about the Leviathan and I'm talking beyond the Leviathan truth. I'm talking all the truth, but this has got to be shared. Oh, but first things first, take a talk. You know me, this is purely for entertainment purposes only. All things stated here are just speculation. We're just having a little bit of fun. New book, and let's go. The whole world is buzzing. I believe it is. Who cares who unleashed the Kraken? Because the Kraken, compared to the Leviathan, child's play. She makes a lot of sense, by the way. Leviathan possibly being loose down by Antarctica in the oceans, the blob, along with the seas, mysteriously heating up like never before, causing sharks to attack people left and right on the shores down in Florida and I guess probably various places. All marine creatures to become very aggressive and act out of their character, and even many beach themselves and unalag themselves, as if to be running from something massive that they are afraid of. Trust and believe they are, and yes, trust and believe it is huge. No, there is no measure to the size of a Leviathan that would even make sense to you or I. It's big, and it's loose. The Kraken next to the Leviathan looks like a soft shell crab. Oh, what? Soft shell crab. Truths. Here we go. While everybody is talking about the Leviathan, yes, in fact, it is a biblical creature, but yes, in fact, just like we are finding out about everything, everything in that Bible, my friends, is true. And yes, in fact, it does live here amongst us in this world today. But nobody's talking about its cousin, the equally horrifying large massive creature. But unlike the Leviathan that is a sea creature, a dragon of the sea, of sorts, a multi-headed dragon of the sea, to be exact, its illegitimate cousin is landlocked, the Bohemoth. God made the Leviathan and the Bohemoth, two of each, on the fifth day. A male and a female, and God looked at it and thought, hmm, that's not good. That's probably not great at all. Because it explains in Job 40. Read the whole thing, guys. Do you have homework? No man, no group of man, no nothing, no army could ever kill the Leviathan. And another thing that it explains about the Leviathan, it lives in the deep abyss. And it, hang on to your bridges, makes the waters of the oceans boil. Boil. Hmm, that might explain why the oceans are remarkably getting hotter suddenly because perhaps the leviathan has come up from the abyss the deeps where it has lived and is now roaming about the ocean preparing for exactly this time and what is about to happen between it and the behemoth chosen ones elect ones righteous ones this should make you excited but i digress we will get to that at the end the leviathan is like a dragon a serpent of the sea it's got multi-heads it breathes fire and smoke and it is massive and the behemoth its land cousin oh it's equally as massive it dwells in the rivers and the greenlands and it seems to be described as a herbivore all right that's not hoo -hoo, bone chilling but it's huge its tail swings like a cedar and its power is in its belly now one might think to yourself okay i could see how they could hide a leviathan in the sea because that sea is big i mean we're talking big but how how could man ever hide a behemoth a massive land creature like that come on how could you hide that whole thing from the world i know what you're thinking both could easily hide where well it seems most obvious. Oh, I don't know, somewhere that is, I don't know, off limits, unavailable to the public for exploration. I don't know, someplace like <gasps> Antarctica. But it, it's a herbivore. Antarctica is a big land of continent ice, ice continent. <laughs> I'm not laughing at the fact it's not. Actually, I am, but I'm laughing at the fact I said it like that. What if I were to tell you, it is my hunch, 
and the fact that the blob first appeared in Antarctic waters and went along up the coast of South America in April, right around the same time the sea started to get a lot hotter, that does tend to make me think, oh, now we can understand why they don't want us down in Antarctica at all, all of the countries. But how could the behemoth hide in Antarctica if it's all snow covered and there's no trees or rivers for it to dwell in? Well, my friends, that's easy. Because not only is Antarctica not a continent just full of ice, Antarctica, my friends, is an ice wall. And I do truly believe that along with the Leviathan being hid down deep in the waters, the abyss down in the Antarctic waters, that is exactly where the behemoth has been hiding as well. Well, not in the waters, but on the land. But we'll get to that one sec. There are some vital truths that you need to understand for this all to come together and make sense. Vital truth number one, NASA in Hebrew means deceive. NASA originally was founded to explore something far different than outer space. NASA's main focus was always the ocean, exploring the great depths of the unexplored ocean itself. In fact, NASA was busy exploring the oceans in the 40s and the 50s with whispers of a project called Project Leviathan. But quickly, one man, one comment he made on one nationally broadcast TV show in the 50s changed it all. And an unusual set of events took place. And that man, my friends, was Admiral Richard Ebert. Hands down, by far, notoriously the most notable and amazing polar explorer America has ever known. Nay, the world has ever known. A pilot, and not just any pilot, but the first pilot to ever fly over the South Pole in 1920-something. I don't remember, and I'm running late. The very same polar explorer who spearheaded Project Hyjal in 1946, extended to 1947, an exploration team that explored Antarctica and the South Pole. And my friends, what Admiral Richard E. Byrd discovered, that is what changed everything, and fast. Admiral Richard E. Byrd went on television to explain their findings. I have shared videos about this in the clip. You can easily Google it. I'm not gonna share it on this video because this video is staying up. But in a nutshell, he said, we discovered land, undiscovered land, inhabitable green land, the size of America, maybe a little bit larger, just beyond the South Pole. Well, now that's shocking. Green, lush, inhabitable, full of minerals, rich with ore. And why have we not heard of this since then? And why does that place not have a name? And even better, why is that place still not on a map? I digress. Well, no, before I digress, why do they still want us to believe Antarctica is a big old snowy continent when we know better? It is, in fact, my friends, an ice wall. Before I go on further to explain the odd events in their order of occurrence, there's another vital truth you must understand. There is, in fact, a firmament above us. It was so important, God placed it on the second day, and it is right there smack dab on the first page of the Bible. What's a firmament, Auntie? Oh, I got you. It is an impenetrable dome over us that separates the waters above from the waters below. Impenetrable. Ain't nobody getting out, and nobody's getting in. Making NASA and space travel an absolute farce. After Richard E. Byrd exposed this truth on TV, according to his journals, boy, the government was not happy, not at all. They told him to zip it and never say it again. But it seems as though I don't know if they felt they could trust him with that. In 1957, not long after the airing of that episode, 60-year-old Admiral Richard E. Byrd, one of the most physically fit polar explorers of American history, passed away unexpectedly of a heart attack in his sleep. And it is a shame he passed away had he just hung on Less than a year later, he could have witnessed one thing. In 1958, the founding of NASA. Same explorers, just different place. Space, many are understanding now, it was more of a distraction or a diversion. Uh, don't look down there, look up there, sort of thing. Because remember, boys and girls, space, it does not exist. And ironically, not so ironically, just a year after that, in 1959, the Antarctic Treaty was signed by 12 countries making personal exploration of Antarctica impossible. The public was no longer allowed. It was off limits. I'll give you just a second there to do that math. So we know now our eyes are wide open. NASA, it's a farce. Why were they so interested in the oceans before? And why did they have to distract us with outer space after Admiral Richard E. Byrd dropped the bag explaining that he found inhabitable Greenland just beyond the South Pole the size of America? Yet we have never seen or heard of that land ever since. Enter the Antarctic Treaty signed by these countries, making it impossible for us to go chickety check check that all out. What do you suppose they've been hiding this whole time? Did Admiral Richard E. Byrd happen to find more than just land, inhabitable land beyond the South Pole? Greenland? Lushland? Did NASA actually find something more in the ocean? Perhaps the one thing they've been looking for all along? Perhaps in that one spot? Well, we're just not ever allowed to go. Did NASA discover the Leviathan down in Antarctic area, around or along the ice wall? And did Admiral Richard E. Byrd either A, discover the Bohemian 
because remember, there's green, inhabitable, lush land down there. And that is the exact kind of inhabitants the behemoth would love and live in. And if he didn't see the behemoth for himself, did he at least accidentally discover the behemoth's home sweet home? Could both of these biblical beasts, these monstrous, massive beasts, have been hiding down there in Antarctica all along? Now, here's why the chosen, the elect, and the righteous should be totally excited with the fact that the Leviathan, yeah, might in fact be loose. Because biblically, there is a story where the Leviathan and the Bohemoth, because now there are only one, but in the end of days, the Bohemoth and the Leviathan, I'm talking the end of days, will not only meet up in the same place, same time, y'all, those two, they're going to have beef. And there shall ensue the most epic biblical battle between the Bohemoth and the Leviathan. Bohemoth's horns will interlock and the fins of the Leviathan will do harm. But at that point, God will intercede and slay them both. And the chosen and the elect and the righteous will witness this. And not only witness this, but they will feast on the beast of the land under the canopies made of the Leviathan skin. So there you have it. If the Leviathan's loose, don't be scared. Be excited because it could potentially be by far hands down one of the final, final biblical prophecies before Yeshua's return. And I don't know about you, chosen ones, but I'm hungry and I am so ready to go back home. The most interesting thing is we actually know the name of the land where the Bohemoth lives. It is called Duodin, and it is east of Eden. Could this lush land that Admiral Lord Trudy Bird found and discovered actually be Duodin that we've never heard of? Right next to the abyss where the Leviathan had been thrown? Could this be where these two creatures have stayed ever since? Could Duodane be an area that we've never been able to see for ourselves? Because, well, it's off limits down by Antarctica, the ice wall, just east of Eden. And could Antarctica actually house Eden as well? Now, that's very, very interesting. Here's her link to TikTok. She's very, she's on it. She has a lot of interesting other stories and other facts. I found it very interesting seeing this. Whatever is the happening down there. I don't know if this is common, but I've never seen anything like this. 